Hello again, my friends. Miss Joseph here. I am just going to continue reading The White Giraffe by Lauren St. John. We are on chapter three. We left off where she was about to I think, get on the plane or something. She was about to make her trip to South Africa. So here is the picture for chapter three. <clears throat> and... Let's just get to it. By the way, I know that doing this to your books is not a good thing, but it's my own book, and that's how I like to read and be comfy. Don't do it to other people's books, but whatever. <laughs> okay, chapter three. The first thing Martine noticed was the heat. It rose from the airport runway in a soupy, silvery haze so thick that the horizon appeared to bow under the weight of the blue sky and all the plains had wavy edges as if in a dream. Back in England, it had been a freezing winter's night, with a weather report forecasting gales and heavy snow. But here, Martine felt as if she were burning up. She stood without moving, a small, deathly pale 11-year-old, and watched the other passengers board the yellow bus to the terminal. Wake up, love, you don't want to be left behind. A bald man in a billabong surf shirt was leaning over her. Where's mom and dad? Are they waiting for you? Not the right thing to say. Martine wanted to burst into tears and scream so loudly that everyone in the airport could hear. Yes, actually, I do want to be left behind. And no, my mom and dad are not waiting. They'll never be waiting. Instead, she just mumbled. I, I'm just, I'm not, I... Somebody's meeting me. You don't sound very sure. Harry, what are you doing? I'm fed up to the, the back teeth with you. I've never heard that one before. The bus is leaving, and if you're not here in five seconds, so am I, a woman called shrilly. I'll be fine, Martine told the man. Thanks for asking. Really? He reached out a damp pink paw and patted her hard on the shoulder. Cheer up, love. You're in Africa now. The woman at the information desk at Cape Town Airport tapped a little drum roll. It's like this. I don't know if you can hear that or not. The woman at the information desk at Cape Town Airport tapped a little drum roll on the counter with her purple nails and squinted over Martine's head at the line that was beginning to form. Her name tag described her as Nolene Henshaw, assistant supervisor. My girl, it's not that I don't want to help you, she told Martine in a nasal voice, but I'm going to need a few more details. Now, what does your grandmother look like? Martine tried to conjure up a picture of the grandmother she had never seen. Well, I... Do you have a phone number for your grandmother? Just an address, admitted Martine. For much of her journey, she'd been taken care of by a cheery flight attendant named Haley, whose job it was to look after accompanied minors. But as soon as they landed in South Africa, Haley had pointed her in the direction of the airport bus and, just as cheerily, waved goodbye. Nolene gave an exasperated shake of her henna-red hair and looked, at, looked again at the line. Sweetie, I think the best thing for you to do is sit over there, where I can keep an eye on you. If your grandmother doesn't show up, I'll try to find someone to help you. Okay, Martine said uncertainly. Thank you. She picked up her suitcase and her new olive green backpack, a present from Miss Rose, and walked into the arrivals hall, taking a seat under the Welcome to South Africa sign. Never in her life had she felt less welcome. More than an hour had gone by since her plane had landed in Cape Town, and still no one had arrived to collect her. Martine was close to tears. Her worst fears had been realized. Her grandmother hadn't wanted her, and so she hadn't bothered to come and fetch her. What Martine was going to do now, with no money and nowhere to stay, she had absolutely no idea. Added to which, she was weak with hunger. It was 10 o'clock in the morning, and all she'd had to eat since the previous evening was Mrs. Morrison's chocolate cake. The food on the plane had been inedible. The scrambled eggs were watery, the rolls had the consistency of tennis balls, and the main meal smelled like pet food. 
Martine made up her mind that she would never, that she would never fly again without extensive supplies of cake and maybe some ham sandwiches for good measure. Opposite her, a smiling customer left a juicy Lucy stand with a smoothie and a large muffin. Martine's stomach rumbled enviously. Miss Martine, you will be thinking we have forgotten you, boomed a voice so deep it rumbled in her chest like a bass drum. Martine looked up to see a mahogany giant be bearing down on her, arms outstretched, and the broadest smile in Africa on his face. He had a scar in the shape of a question mark on one shiny cheek and a tooth on a leather thong around his neck. He was wearing a bush, ha a bush hat with a zebra skin band, a khaki hunter type clothing that had seen better days. Miss Martine, he queried. Without waiting for her to reply, he gripped her hand and pumped it up and down furiously. I'm Tendai, he said. I'm very, very happy to meet you. Your grandmother has told me all about you. She was very sorry that she couldn't be here to collect you, but oh, what a morning we have had. Late last night, we received a call to say that, due to a mix-up with some paperwork, a shipment of elephants we were expecting next weekend was being delivered early this morning. There was nobody to supervise their arrival except your grandmother and myself, and she had to stay until the vet had checked each one. I offered to fetch you instead. I forgot that a man of the bush knows nothing about the highway. I have been driving all over Cape Town. I hope you can forgive me. I will get you home to Saubona. Just as fast as I can. If you know how to say that word, let me know. It's S A W U B O N A. I think it's Sal Salbona, but I don't know. Martine hardly knew how to respond to this torrent of words, but she immediately warmed to the big, gentle man who delivered them. He carried nature with him, almost like an aura. Pleased to meet you, Tendai, she said adding shyly, of course I forgive you. At these words, Tendai laughed, picking up her suitcase and tucking it under one arm as if it weighed no more than a hen. He led the way out into the sunshine. All right, that's the end of chapter three. The next one's chapter four. There is a look at that picture. All right, see you guys next time. Have a good day.